No less than two minutes ago, this thing went bang when I plugged it into setup for the shot. Uh, sad you missed that. Uh, anyway, this is a set of Cambridge Soundworks uh, Megaworks THX 550 computer speakers. Uh, surround sound 5.1 thing from like, I don't know, 2005 or so. Uh, I've been using the, these uh, for an office PC. They just sit plugged in 24-7. Uh, they have a standby feature on the remote. So... Uh, they see a fair, fair amount of hours on the power supply, even though they're not in use a lot. And uh, when I tried to use them a while back, the, the power supply just went tick, 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 and it wouldn't power on whatsoever. And it had probably been sitting like that for uh, days or even weeks prior to my actually finding that out. Uh, and now something's gone quite horribly wrong with it. Uh, I haven't checked the fuse yet. We should probably start there because the sound this thing made was quite reminiscent of one of those old-timey electrolytic caps going bang violently. So that's probably going to be a mess inside and I kind of regret plugging them in now. So let's just get the main fuse out and see if it's horribly exploded. Nope, that is in prime shape, so it's likely to be something on the secondary which has gone pop. So let's just get all the millions of screws out of this thing. I don't think I've ever had this thing apart before. All right, I think we should now be able to pop this sucker out of here. Yes, indeed. Let's prepare for the carnage. Right, this is not coming easily. All right, it smells like bad cap in there. The speaker's soldered in and uh, uh, doesn't have connectors, so we'll have to take the speaker out first and desolder that. Uh, let's just pop... Oh, that's coming way easy. Uh, that is entirely soldered in, and I can see someone's been messing with this thing before because a couple of leads are shrink-wrapped there. Uh, all the leads for Woofer are actually shrink-wrapped, so this thing's been fixed in the past, I would be willing to bet. But uh, we're just going to desolder these leads. These are dual voice coil Woofers. Uh, they do that in order to get away with using several cheap chip amps. Lead 3. Lead 4. There we go. This reel doesn't look like a bad driver. Quite hefty. Compact little thing. Don't mind the look of that at all. Uh, right, so let's get that power amplifier module out of there. There she comes. Wow, an impressive absence of any kind of damping material in there. Uh, that's gonna get changed. And here is the power amplifier module in all its glory. Something I can tell which you can't is that there's a very pungent, uh, burny, acidic, uh, electronics-y smell emanating from it. Uh, it's not entirely a capacitor smell. It could be cap, it could be uh, burnt uh, glue, it could be burnt PCB, I'm not entirely certain. But uh, this thing does look like a tank to get inside. We've got one, two, three boards all wrapped into this aluminium frame. No real heatsink on the output power amplifiers. There's a few chip amps uh, sitting in there. Uh, unlikely for those to be the issue given the symptom of it, this thing just going bang. Uh, I have worked on one of these prior, the larger model of it. And that one actually had a short in the power amplifier PCB. The actual board had gone bad with time. I'm hoping that's not the issue here because while that one had a few different boards, so I could just get rid of one of the boards and still have functionality. And that's obviously not the case here where we've just got one unified amplifier board. Uh, yeah, I'm really going to have to take a dig around. They are no obviously exploded caps if we just look at it, but uh, there are plenty of caps to go around. They seem to be 100% caps on. Uh, switch mode power supply primary caps. There, that one's a primary as well. 
millions of little tiny electrolytics in there. Uh, this doesn't look to be a particularly fun repair. If we have issues with the caps going bad and we have issues with these going bad, then uh, oh god. I'm going to be replacing caps for the rest of my days. But uh, yeah, I don't think that's going to be the issue. Oh, hello there. That to me looks for all the world like conductive goo, which has run a bit hotter here than it has there. So let's just stick some probes in there and see if there's anything. Yeah. Uh, we're getting my games, but uh, that's because we're just probing it. This is conductive goo. I'm gonna be doing a lot of scraping tonight, I think. Ugh. Conductive goo, great. So now we just got to track down where it's actually gotten conductive enough to start to uh, carry in current. Hmm, likely to be on the secondary side since the main fuse was gone despite the loud pop. Uh, it could be, uh, it could be anything. Oh Christ, what have I got myself into? Well, I can't for the life of me find a, uh, any particular spot that's gone horribly bang in this thing. I can't find any witness mark, no exploded components, no nothing. So, in order to try and uh, minimise damage, I've uh, connected up to my power supply and figured it would just to turn off the voltage with a rather low current limit uh, and see if it started drawing in a horrible amount of current. So, let's just do that. Alright, two volts already drawing something. Right now he's doing the tick mode thing, which it was doing before. When connected up to the grid. Pain's plants getting tick tick tick. They're not drawing any huge amount of current. Well, that's weird. That's he'd expect if a transformer getting tick, so Pat we're looking at a short circuit on the eight put. Hmm. Next step is getting this power supply board out of there. Finally. Power supply module. And we do have some of the conductive gunk here on the underside. Around the ground there. Could be cause of issue. Oh, that seems to be a low voltage part since we just have a little white connector. Uh, ground there. Yeah, that's high voltage side, although is not bridging across to any uh, actual current carrying traces, so that should be alright as well. I right, see so something I am quite suspicious towards is uh, all the primary side caps on this thing. We've got uh, two quite large ones there, as well as a smaller one there. Uh, since these, uh, at least one of these is going to be connected to a grid all the time. It's not entirely unexpected as a failure, so I'm just going to probe those with the proprietary capacitance meter which you cannot get anywhere and make everyone ask me about it. Uh, 5 ohms, 33 microfarads, sounds a bit right for that one. Yeah, that's good enough. Uh, the big ones... 100 milliohms, 655 microfarads, sounds about right for those as well. Let's see. Uh, over 200 volts rated, 680 microfarads. So they're going to be in series. That one's 692, 123. That one's uh, about the same. So. Together, yeah, that's them in series, so those are measuring just, just fine. No cause for concern there whatsoever. It's uh, very unlikely for caps to uh, fail at uh, higher applied voltages, so uh, we do have a 100 volt, uh, one phase of microfarad here. Uh, probably secondary side main cap. Surprisingly high voltage though. Yeah, that looks fine, absolutely fine. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be the issue either. Alright, I just did some off-camera measurements and uh, I'm 
afraid we have the issue i'm afraid of uh, because if we measure some of these smaller caps on this board let's uh, uh, just check uh, uh, has uh, let's see what we've got we've got a 47 microfarad uh, 25 volt uh, in the standby power supply a little uh, top 243 i believe on the uh, small heatsink there so that should be 47 microfarads and we get 11 microfarads with greater than 100 ohms esr so that cap is shot it's little blue caps on uh, if we take and measure this uh, 0.1 microfarad one right next to it it's 0.02 and that trend will go on across the entire device including the power amplifier board uh, we even have issues with these secondary caps here we've got a bunch of 35 volt 100 microfarads if we probe that we get 2 ohms of ESR, which is uh, an order of magnitude higher than what you'd wish to see in a 100 microfarad cap. Uh, just for uh, completeness sake, let's grab a 100 mic out of a component cabinet. Here's a 163 Panasonic new. 100 milliohms, so uh, yeah. They're buggered. So no wonder the uh, standby power supply is not starting. Uh, it still doesn't explain what the bang I saw was. Uh, but we need to consider that this entire device has been connected to this, which is uh, quite capable of producing a bang noise if agitated. So I'm going to give uh, this the benefit of the doubt and uh, say that the bang came out of a speaker as the power supply failed to start and uh, I'm going to replace a bunch of caps on here and I will not bore you with filming that because it's going to be dreary as hell uh, and uh, we're going to see if we can at least get this uh, power supply to fire back up because yeah that's that's just such an obvious issue these caps have to go either way and we've got like tens of them. I don't even know if I have enough new caps in stock to make this happen. Oh dear me. Uh, great. Back in a bit. Alright. Sometime later we would now get all new colours on the output side of the power supplies on this board. So when we tried applying uh, 150 volts DC to this board before, we got a ticking noise. Uh, I, I'm quite certain the standby power supply on this uh, device is the top 243 here, and these are generally uh, dual voltage devices. So I'm just going to try putting 150 volts over here again, even though the sticker on the actual subwoofer uh, says uh, 220 volts only, uh, because I think this thing is going to fire up anyway and uh, I'm quite certain uh, that has been our major issue these standby power supplies simply uh, not being there also spent quite a man, lot of time just chipping away at this fucking brain diarrhea all over the board because it eats away at the solder mask and then it starts conducting all over and that's never a good thing we have a lot of corroded tracks all over from it and some rather nasty looking flux residue there from the manufacturing process uh, this does not seem to be of the highest quality product anyway let's just uh, get some wires uh, clamped on there and see if we get a standby power oh, I've got no idea which cap is actually the standby output so we'll just probe around randomly here comes power it's a tick once and it's drawing 40 milliamps so that's a good sign Prior was just ticking uh, forever and ever and uh, drawing about 10 milliamps or so oh we do have something 26 volts there over one of the caps, 8 volts, 8 volts, 
Uh, well, I didn't check it before. I wouldn't be surprised if these voltages were there prior. So, let's just uh, try and pair this thing on again and see uh, if we'll get some sweet tunes. All right. I've reassembled it enough for a test. It's very ugly. It's so hard to screw everything in place. I don't want to reassemble everything properly until I know for certain it's working and all work with it is done. So I'll connect it up a mini disc player. We should be having some lovely mini disc music coming out of the headphone output and uh, we've got test speaker hooked up and shouldn't be any horrible shorts to anywhere. So, I do think we are ready to flick the switch. Let's hope it doesn't go bang again. Now we do have a pair LED on the back. It's drawing the seven watts of standby power it usually does. And we have a red LED on our control panel. So, let's uh, try and turn it on. Will I click? Drawing 32 watts. And we are getting signal. Not a lot of it since we're connected to the subwoofer output. But uh, that is indeed signal. <sighs> what a relief, so that would be a fix. Now, the issue is I've got to get this bloody thing back together, and that is not going to be easy given that uh, all the plastic standoffs for the power supply board have broken in many a piece uh, due to the fact that the brown goopy stuff they shoved all over this thing has turned corrosive over time as it always does. So I'm going to meditate over reassembly for a while and we'll go from there. This annoys me. That rolls off the tongue much better. All right, I've found a solution. I've just cut up some plastic bar, which I'm gonna drill through and force some screws to thread into, that's gonna work just fine. But before we reassemble everything, just have a look at the horrors which lie be beneath this brain shit that I put on the board. I haven't used any excessive violence while removing it, uh, but it's just eaten away of a solder mask. And we've got exposed copper everywhere, and at some stage places it's even eaten through the solder mask and begun a chewing onto the copper and it's even worse on the other side of the board uh, where you can see right there around the caps it's just removed a large chunk of solder mask and uh, there was some signs of corrosion there where it just started conducting between the tracks under the solder mask it's just insane it, it turns into destructive alien acid this, this stuff and They've put it all over, they've even put it on the bloody primary side of a power supply. Where it could damn near cause some <laughs> issues. That's not a lot of clearance. I mean, keep in mind, this stuff is conductive. This thing has no real reference to ground, and this is chassis ground. So you could easily have creepage there. That's disgusting, really. Anyway, let's clean this up and get this thing back together. Yuck. All right, and here are our new standoffs. Getting these in place was hell on earth without removing these wraparound heat sinks, uh, but uh, they are there. You know, I had to actually remove this capacitor and uh, resolder it on top of the screw there in order to make everything fit together. So it certainly was a bit of a tight fit with the original standoffs being the type of you just click through and squeeze to get back out. But uh, I'm quite uh, happy with how this turned out. Oh, well, now I just got to mount this. However, in order to do that, I need to get screws through from the other side of the heatsink, which means I've had to take the power amplifier board out. I figured we'd have a bit of a look at that. Uh, 
repair wires are measured through it with the proprietary ESR meter you can't get and uh, decided that uh, this 100 microfarad cap, this 22 microfarad caps as well as one uh, 22 microfarad cap for each of the four amplifier ICs uh, were due for replacement. Uh, the rest of the caps on the board seem to be 2.2 and 1 microfarad once and they measure close enough to their original values with relatively high ESRs of about 10 ohms that uh, I, I, I'm not going to bother replacing them because they still work. Uh, it's very likely that we just uh, couple of the signal through so they're not going to be under any, any very heavy load they're just going to be coupling uh, my music so when they go bad we run out of bass and uh, I'll take that issue when it arises so now we've just got to uh, assemble everything in proper order uh, making sure to main the power supply first since we need to get the screw through there which is obviously right underneath the uh, power amplifier module so this should fit quite neatly. Going to be a bit annoying getting this ground thing in place as well. Oh, well, that feels so bad. And it's going to work well enough. Houston, this is Shuttle 1 requesting clearance for takeoff. Uh, shuttle 1, you are clear to proceed as ordered. Roger, Houston, taking off. All right, and many, many an hour of fiddle-fucking around with this thing, uh, we've got it back together. I've decided to spare you the footage because uh, this was such a pain to assemble. For the most part, it was just a, a man covered in white fluid uh, doing a very poor job at screwing, so uh, that would attract a bit of an odd audience for the channel. Anyway, uh, we have everything hooked up for a bit of a performance test since uh, since we haven't used the HP 339A in a while I figured we'd give it a bit of a go. So I've just connected up a couple of dodgy leads to the device and we've got an input signal, we've got it plugged in and we're pretty much ready to go. So I'm reasonably certain nothing's going to explode when we turn this thing on so let's just try it. Power on there, power on there. Uh, in standby, power on, relay click. Yeah, it's powered on just fine, so let's pan to the distortion meter. Alright, we're connected up and powered on. Uh, we're measuring a 40 Hz signal, 8 bit subwoofer so rate, but it's set to, I don't know, some volume setting. Uh, and we should be getting some signal. We're at a 3 volts full scale setting of a meter. Yeah, there we go. So now we're at like yeah, 1 watt of output. Coming through loud and clear, so what's our distortion? Probably going to be up there. That's not too bad. 0.1%. So let's just uh, set this to the like 3% setting, turn it to the uh, 10 volt setting, see if we can get some power out of this thing. I just want to see when it starts clipping. I can hear the, hear the power supply making some noise. Yeah, there we go. I don't know, it could be a meter clipping actually. There we go, we're on the 30 volt range drawing 76 watts, that's not a lot. And we're getting uh, about 13 and a half volts into 8 ohms, and that would be about 23 watts. Uh, Alright, scratch that, I made a measuring mistake here, I have now turned the volume up a bit higher on the uh, actual uh, speaker set and now we're getting a much higher signal at the uh, a, an acceptable distortion rating, so let's see here well, where, where we can get some clipping. So we're still the 10% distortion range, turning it up, we're drawing 120 watts from a grid, and doesn't seem to be drawing more than that. Now oh, there we go. It's it's set to max and you know now we're clipping. So that's about five percent. And that is twenty point five volts. Yeah we're not getting it over twenty and a half volts. So twenty point five volts into eight ohms is just over fifty watts. So that's almost 100 watts into the subwoofer, and that's more like it. 
that is certainly a lot more like it. And that means we're going to be having like 50 watts per channel into each of the satellites and 100 watts into a sub. That is far more usable power than I in than our first flawed measurement. So let's just see what our, uh, the top of our really clean power is. So let's turn it down to like 1% distortion full scale and turn it up until we uh, click just ever so slightly at 1% there we go that's 1% distortion and it's running 118 watts and we're yeah we're getting the same 20.5 volts into 8 ohms that's not bad at all 50 watt per channel amp I think that's pretty close to the spec on the amplifier ICs used as well uh, I think this is uh, based on I think the amplifier is an SDA540, but don't quote me on that. Either way, let's get this thing back together now. Oh yeah, and before we put everything back together, uh, I went out to the barn. I found a children's overalls fitting a 6 or 7 year old, which you know one around this house and it has any use for anymore. And I cut it up to make a bit of a lining on the inside of this thing. And uh, I just stapled it to the edges. It should be sitting there quite sturdily. Now we have a bit of damping to get rid of any horrible boomy box noises this thing would otherwise make. Well, here's something odd for you. I think I've wired the two voice calls up uh, anti-parallel so one's going one way the other one's going the other way I thought I paid attention to the way I did it but it seems not because keep an eye on the power meter as I turn the volume up it's drawing a bunch of power but there's no sound coming out and if I turn it up high it'll just draw a stupid amount of power so I think we've got to take this thing back apart unscrew this thing and worried one of the calls up the other way around because I'd be surprised if there was anything else causing that. And yes, indeed, if I haven't managed to give, put the red wire on the black marking there, uh, what's a silly mistake to make? All right, well, that issue sorted. Let's see if we can get some whoops going out here. Ah, quite quickly. million holes to cover. Oh, let's see if we can get some movement going. At three in the morning. That seems to be running just fine. Quite happy to call that a fix. And we already knew that. So there you go, that's how to fix a Cambridge uh, Megaworks THX550 uh, and the answer is uh, about 20 caps, few plastic standoffs and about a day's worth of work getting the bloody thing back together. But hey, at least I've got my office wubs back now, so thank you for watching, cheerio.